So because it's so cold outside this morning, it's in the 20s Fahrenheit. For here, that's cold. And uh, it's also extremely icy out there. And if, work, if I work on this hillside much, I'm gonna end up over in the creek because I've almost ended up there a couple times already because of the ice. And to be honest, I'd almost rather get in a fist fight with a martial artist than to trim out this window, but it needs done. It's the last one, so I might as well knock it out. At least it's warm in here. So I'm gonna try to do it fast. Probably won't happen fast, but I'm gonna try. <sighs> okay, winner, you win. I'm ready for spring. Man, it's some beautiful stuff. Once the weather gets warm, I gotta go through all of my lumber, stack it up according to size and put it under something better than pieces of tin. So there's just some things that I don't necessarily enjoy doing and trimming these windows just happens to be one of those things. And that's the reason why this big window's not done yet. It's been months. <laughs> You know, it's so cold outside, I figured why not try to knock it out and get it behind me so it doesn't <laughs> eat at me all the time every time I go in the shop and look at it unfinished. These are not the best quality nails. I had a viewer several years ago buy me a whole bunch of these Ziploc bags. They're just really heavy duty, thick Ziploc bags. And at the time I was like, man, what am I gonna do with all those Ziploc bags? But I think it was Jeffrey Lewis, I'm not for sure, the gentleman who bought me these. But I've grown to appreciate having all these heavy duty Ziploc bags because I've spilt these little brass nails I don't know how many times. And I'm just now getting around to putting them in their own little bag. So, great for just small stuff storage. U-N-N-I is on the, on the package here. I don't remember where they come from, but you get the idea. I'm sure you can get them in all sorts of sizes. Filming, filming next to a window is tough with all the light.
sometimes they just don't go in straight. Finally, finished. Looks as good as the rest of them. I just haven't urethaned this one yet, but much nicer. Hold your hand over the back of it. It's not helping. <laughs> That's all right. That's no, enough. Look, it's all going down there. Let me set this coffee down. Like a cup. Yeah. I'll hold it. That's nothing. That one will fill the other one up. I'm not going to buy that other seat again. Yeah, like it. No. They've basically kicked all that seed on the ground. Yeah. Oh. They only ate the little black seed. They ate the sunflower seeds and that's it. They're getting picky. <laughs> yeah, the little ground squirrels will eat the rest of it. So I'd be willing to bet that most of my viewers have seen me use this knife quite often. I've actually carried a knife like this for many years, and it's a little Gerber utility knife, stainless steel, thin pocket clip on it so it rides high in the pocket. You don't have to sharpen it ever, right? You just swap out the blade, and when you dull one side, you can flip the blade over and uh, use a fresh part of the other end of the blade. So great knife that I couldn't recommend any higher than what I do. Not the most heavy duty knife, but you get the idea. It's great general box cutting utility knife. But while changing the blade out on it, I remembered that a viewer of mine, Mark Ramsell from Borderton, New Jersey, had sent me some replacement screws. Because the little screws on this are easy to lose, and I have a couple knives in the house that are missing the screws, you know, he had made some uh, replacements up and sent them to me. So thank you, Mark. I really appreciate that. He had mentioned in his letter, really nice letter, and I appreciate it, that he had had a stroke uh, not too awful long ago. And in his recovery, uh, he found it therapeutic to work on these small parts. So he took the time to send me some screws, and I really appreciate that. So thank you, Mark. Best of luck on the recovery. I'm going to go swap those screws out now. So for the longest time here at the house and at the shop, we've had satellite internet. Satellite internet that is absolutely horrible and sometimes would take me three to six hours to upload a two gig video when things are good. And when you watch videos in what, 144p, they still load every 15 to 20 seconds. That's how bad our internet connection here is at the place. 
So recently we bought this Starlink kit. It just arrived and I'm excited, really excited to get this thing installed and try it out. This should change the way things work around here, potentially even be able to live stream with this if it works as well here as it does for other people. So I can't wait to get this thing installed and try it out. So this kit came with the dish, obviously, a hundred foot for the for the satellite wire and then a HDMI, a power supply, and a router. So pretty simple. Hopefully this works out really well and installs easy. Well, that's pretty clear. They made it they made it uh, foolproof here. looking little uh, router. Awesome. So I just got done installing the Starlink system here at the house. And let me say that it's absolutely amazing compared to the old internet provider that we had. Now for our old provider, we paid actually more than what we're paying per month for the Starlink system. And we were watching 144p videos with them loading every 15 seconds. Not all the time. The speed would vary, but it was never good and would almost never load a video over, what is it, 240p? So this new Starlink system, although it does drop out on occasion, it's not perfect. Multiple, multiple people watching 4K videos at the same time. My son downloaded a 10 or 11 gig um, game and just minutes versus you know, it would take all night or longer than that if it would download it at all. So let me say that's just a game changer for us and I'm excited now to have access to relatively high speed internet. Um, I really feel like our old provider took advantage of us in a way. They were the only game in town and they knew it uh, for people like us so they charged a premium price for a subpar product. Um, I didn't know internet, I didn't know satellite internet could be as fast as what we have right now. And we're just in the beta testing stages of this Starlink. It should only get better. So my experience is good so far. What limited experience that I do have with it. I'm not gonna show the installation of it because it literally is plug in two things and set your satellite down and connect your device to it. It's that easy. I feel like I've been ripped off by the old company, to be honest. That's what, it, that's what I feel. I'm excited and angry at the same time. But, you know, those old companies like what we had, when you disregard your customers, you know, issues that I obviously have had issues with them to being a content provider and have called them on multiple occasions, and I really feel like that they did the best that they could to get me off the phone, and that was it, and never for years never resolved our issues. And uh, if you treat your customers like that, and you charge them like that, charge them as much as what they've been charging us, and then a competition comes in with a better product at a cheaper price, what do you think is gonna happen to that company? So get their coming up, coming ups, comeuppins, whatever you wanna call it. So this is on the top here is an extremely straight 2x4, and that's what I'm going to use. It's a 10-foot. I wish I had a 
16 foot, but I don't uh, on hand. This is going to be my guide for my first row of shingles. Whoa, don't fall over the hill, bud. <laughs> so this first run of shingles is just, it's going to be above where the actual first row is going to be. And the reason for that is because if I did not, and I'm just throwing stuff all over the place, if I didn't put an, another shingle behind this first row, where they meet up would be a gap straight to the back of the, uh, or to the, to the house wrap, and we don't want that. So we want a shingle behind that first row, and that'll do two things. That seals our gap in between the two shingles, and it also kicks out that bottom row of shingles a little bit and makes it flare. So that's what we're after. So this first row of shingles does nothing but seal the gaps in between your actual first row. You get the idea, hopefully. So another thing that I'm looking for on these shingles is that one side is more finished than the other. It's almost indistinguishable, but on the package that's what it says. Also, we're looking for any cupped shingles, and we want to make sure to put the belly out. That way, the edges of the shingle, if it does start curling, you know, it doesn't stick out from the wall with the edges, just the belly sticks out a bit, which is fine. So, something else you have to account for. Need to set the depth of this a little deeper. Where's the depth? Oh, there it is. So they also recommend you don't hang your shingles real tight. It says a eight, eighth to a quarter inch gap in between the two, so we're gonna we're gonna go on the lighter side. And we're nailing up probably about an inch and a half or so above our reveal and two nails per shingle. So like I said, you won't even see this first row, so it really doesn't matter. As long as you get them spaced.
wow. Just about lost my nailer. Glad that the cord wasn't any longer. It would have banged on the rocks. I'm gonna have to go get it. Better the nailer than me. Solid sheet of ice. That's how you knock the new off of one real quick. These are good shingles, and they seem to cut good and work good. Now I'm not trying to keep this row straight at the bottom because it doesn't even matter. We're just putting up shingles, that's all. Just gap fillers, really, and a kicker. Going pretty good. The storm is not letting up. Hello, brother. You don't have to go there, huh? You see something back there? Yeah. Yeah. Must have been a monster. Okay. Let's go. Can you go past me if you can? Can you go past me? No, I don't need it. Oh, God. <laughs> If I fall, you're going down with me. Yeah, okay. <laughs> That's how we're going down. I think it's lining up about there. It's dead lining up. Good job, Bubba. Go on, Bubba. Yeah. 
Thank you, bub. Don't fall, please. Huh? So don't fall. So that looks pretty good, and those went up really quick, actually. But it's just going to slow down as I get higher on this wall. I don't know if you've seen this hillside, but it's uh, not very wide, but it's quite a ways down and relatively rocky. And I don't want to—I don't want to go down there. So it'll obviously the pace will slow as I as I go up. Now, for the house wrap on this, obviously it's just Tyvek. I have seen more technologically advanced materials used behind cedar shingles or in conjunction with them because. It, if you get water behind these shingles and they're really tight up against the wall, there's nowhere for that water to go other than to evaporate through the shingle. I guess this modern uh, wrap that's available for shingles allows a small air gap. It's like a woven mat, mat or a dimpled material. It allows air to get back up behind the shingles, helps them dry faster potentially could let water run out behind the shingles, but in my case it's not going to make a bit of difference because this wall doesn't get wet. Um, you know, it's going to get some moisture in it from the air, but you know, people have been using Tyvek behind Tyvek, um, tar paper, you name it, behind shingles for a long time, and, they, and it works. So, I wasn't going to tear this off and try to find the most up-to-date material simply because I don't think I'd benefit from it. So Tyvek is what we're using here. Man, it's looking good. I'm excited. I'm not so cold. It's like 22 degrees Fahrenheit out here. Had a shingle split out, and they, they do that on occasion. This is the second one that I've had split. I just didn't press the shingle up hard enough, I guess, when I nailed it. And getting it off without damaging the one behind it. Not the easiest thing. those nails in. No reason to risk damaging the other shingles. I would drive it in if I knew where my hammer was.
So if you're looking for a good pair of gloves, work gloves, they're obviously not the best for extreme cold temperatures, but these are good. These Anzil Cut Protection Kevlar gloves, just thick enough to where they keep your hands warm, thin enough to where you can still have a little bit of dexterity, plus my phone. I can use my phone with these gloves on, which is a bonus. So check these out if you're interested. They're good gloves. So let's take a second and talk about heating the shop. Now this year, all winter, I've been using a little propane blower heater that has been effective, but it's extremely loud and annoying, not the safest thing to use indoors, and it's somewhat expensive actually. Propane is not the cheapest thing to buy around here as far as I'm concerned, plus you gotta go get it and haul it, and all that stuff. Just not something I wanna deal with every year. So I think, well, I think that wintertime will be over here for long and heat will be the last thing on my mind. But what I believe I'm going to do for next year over the summer is save up and invest in a nice, small, maybe two foot by two foot uh, wood stove, one with a glass front. I don't want some huge wood burning behemoth that takes all day to heat up and chews up a bunch of wood. Something modern and nice that I can put in the back of the shop, maybe a stainless steel double walled pipe running out simple uh, but effective now i've got friends that have pellet stoves they swear by them they say they're awesome but i think i'd really be missing out on a i don't know if you've noticed but there's tons of wood around here and i'd be missing out on a relative, relative relatively available and cheap resource if i went with anything other than wood heat for the shop there's something about wood heat that i really like ever since i can remember we've heated well Actually, we heated with coal up till I was probably 11 years old, and then we went to a wood stove. And ever since then, other than maybe a year or so in my life, we've heated with, with wood. And my morning ritual is to get up and start a wood fire and drink coffee, and it's inviting and relaxing and quiet and effective. I just enjoy it. So I think that's what I'm going to do as far as heating the shop for next year anyway, is get me a nice little wood stove. Not some massive unit, but some, something small and nice. That's what I want. No, not my face. Not my face. <laughs> oh, right in my eyes. Oh. <laughs> what I need to do, love, if you would, come over here. And just hold. Hold this, the bottom corner of this, mm -hmm. right at the bottom corner of that shingle, just like that. Okay. Just hold it right like there. This. Yeah. So here Elizabeth's just helping me get set up with a story pole so I can get an even division on my shingle reveal between my bottom of my window here and the top of the window. Well, Look it up if you're interested, it's just an easy way to yeah. achieve that. So the shop's looking pretty good so far, and it's been kind of slow go with this weather, as bad as it's been. But it's not just us. People all around the U.S. are struggling with you know, unseasonably cold weather and ice, freezing rain and snow. It's pretty, and it makes everything you do tough. So beneath the snow and ice somewhere is two of my most favorite pencils. I seem to be going through the writing utensils on this job pretty pretty heavy. I'm not sure why that is. Hopefully they'll show back up once the snow melts. Speaking of the snow, this type of weather is not all that uncommon for where I'm 
located, but there's parts of the U.S. that got hit with the same storm where that's not the case and they're struggling pretty hard. I think down in Texas, um, you know, they're dealing with big power outages. People are actually freezing to death because they're not prepared for, for this type of weather. You know, if you live in a northern environment, this is every day, right? But you know what to expect and you're prepared for it. If you're in a southern environment where this doesn't happen, it can be a real big deal. And uh, hopefully everybody's doing doing okay and pulling through. This will be over before you know it. And the trees will be budding and the grass will be growing and they'll be complaining about mowing grass. <laughs> I actually look forward to complaining about mowing grass. But anyway, I think that's it. Hopefully this internet keeps up and I can stay in a little better contact with you guys. When your uploads take six to eight hours in the past, you know, it's hard to get out a video, but hopefully this will improve things and allow me to be a little more in touch. So I think that's it this week. Looking good. Thanks to my viewers, patrons, subscribers, anybody who's supported me on this project. Huge thanks to the guys who helped me get these shingles. Um, that's a big deal to me, and I appreciate it more than you know. So that's it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. The birds fly south as the light leaves your eyes. Hold on to your dream. Oh, I know you want to scream. Since the day you're born, you're just a flower on your own. Hoping to break through